special edition of Phys Edagogy. I'm Adam Howell, and I'm here today with Patty Castell at PK underscore LV2 love to teach PE. So uh, Patty is a elementary PE teacher at Thorson Elementary in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, and she is also the NASPY Elementary Teacher of the Year. So congratulations, Patty, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Adam. It's great to be here with you. Awesome. So tell me, you've been teaching for 23 years. You're a veteran. Tell me a little bit about your educational journey. I uh, went to UW-La Crosse as an undergrad. Um, as a master's degree, I went to, and I got my physical education and health degree at UW-La Crosse and got a coaching minor as well. And I also, as I um, started to go into my master's degree. I went to UW Whitewater here in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I was coaching at the time, so I had to find um, some place close enough to be able to coach on every night of the week and go to class on a Monday night and get home about nine o'clock at night after driving three hours to get to Whitewater. But got my master's degree there in curriculum and instruction, and just I've been very fortunate. I've been in Cedarburg School District for all 23 years, but even better is I've had a chance to be at all three different um, levels. I started off three years at the middle school level and um, when they moved fifth grade back down to the elementary I traveled between another elementary and the high school. Um, did some coaching for about 14 years in volleyball and when I stopped doing the volleyball I kicked into doing some employee wellness and student wellness in my district. So 23 years later I'm still here in Cedarburg and loving every minute of it. Loving every minute, that's the key. And I know you told me a little bit before we went on air that you knew you wanted to be a teacher very early. How old were you when you knew? <laughs> I was a fifth grader, just like the students I'm teaching. Just like and, the you know, I just, uh, there just was a sense of joy of movement, um, just enjoying uh, the experiences I had in physical education and wanting to be able to share that with others. And pretty much, you know, that followed me all through. Junior, I just junior high and high school and never really looked back and um, knew that lacrosse was going to be a good fit for me, so here I am. <laughs> here you are. No, and, and, and I love it. No, it's great. It's, you know, I, you're, you're truly like a veteran teacher that I've had the chance to talk to on the show, and it's, it's really not, it's great to see someone who is excited now mm -hmm. as they were when they first started teaching, and I think that's such a good thing for, you know, our phys ed community to, to see you know, models like that, you know, who have been Thank doing you, it forever. Adam. I mean, so really appreciate it. So, um, Well, as I shared with you, I just continue to be inspired by mm -hmm. all the people I've met on Twitter. Oh, my goodness, this year has been <laughs> such an amazing year. I joined Twitter in February thanks to Joe Bailey, and, and as we all say, our learning curve has gone way up, and there's so many great educators on Twitter, so... Happy to be here. <laughs> and, and here you are now doing a Google Hangout. It's like I know. from February I know. <laughs> to now. I mean, yes. Yes, so, it's awesome. awesome. So let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the meat of the program today. So okay. let's talk about instruction and classroom management. So I really want to get your perspective on maybe one instructional strategy or something that, you know, in your experience that has been uh, an integral part of your PE program, if I were to walk in your classroom and, and watch, um, that someone watching today can take away and say, you know what, I can do that in my classroom too. Well, I think I'm going to kind of pick two things to share. I'll be real brief with the first one. I think the, the biggest goal I have always had with my PE classes is trying to get them moving as quick as they come into the gym and just trying to keep them moving as much as possible. And so the, um, the moderate to vigorous uh, goal that we are all trying to achieve is something that I've always wanted. You know, we only, you and I talked about the fact that I only see the kids twice a week and I want to squeeze every minute of those 30 minutes that I get with them, educating them but also getting them moving as much as possible. So that's one aspect of my instructional strategy. The other one is that I've had a chance to uh, work with iPads this year, and it has helped me a lot with my assessment and that whole tool. And I don't know if you want me to share a little bit more about that or um, go. I do. Into, I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Well, I, I approached my PTO to get an iPad just because I had seen all the different things that could be done with it. And the biggest thing I wanted to do was use it as a video analysis for my kids. And it kind of has turned into a threefold process for me. The first part is I reduced my stress level this year by being able to just videotape my kids instead of having the stress level of trying to check off on their skills. I could take it home on my own time and watch it. And I feel like I got probably even more valid um, a more valid record of how they were doing because I could actually really look at it instead of just hoping that I was getting them at their best, you know, when I happen to look at them. Second part is that I've been able to um, show them, obviously, mm -hmm. how they've been doing. And I used that as part of my SMART goal with my principal this year was being able to show her 10 scenarios where I showed the student the before picture and then afterwards the progress that they have made. And so I had to validate that there were 10 episodes where I could actually um, see a big difference. And that was so exciting to me. And so on top of that, I have managed to get four um, iPads to use for this coming year for my students to be able to do it with each other. So mm -hmm. kind of the reciprocal style of teaching and have them. I think they will become better at their school work and, and be able to see um, and learn even more because they will be able to teach each other. So, so excited about that. That is exciting. Now, what do you use when you're recording? So, um, do you use an app like Coach's Eye or Ubersense, or do you just use the iPad camera to record? I actually use Coach My Video. Um, that okay. one happens to be a free app. I have um, dabbled into Ubersense and uh, Coach's Eye a little bit, but mm -hmm. I downloaded Coach My Video first, and so that one I'm pretty comfortable, but any of the programs that allow you to do side-by-side -side mm -hmm. is pretty yeah. cool, um, and so that's the feature that, you know, has kind of helped me out to be able to say, this is what you look like, this is what you look like now. Isn't that yeah. exciting? Look! You know, big, and, big and to be able to do the um, lines and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, different features to point out what we're looking for. Sure, so. absolutely. And what is, um, like, if you're going to capture video, like, talk me through the process. Like, like, how do you typically do it? I mean, are you doing it? Is there station work set up? Is it through authentic assessment, through gameplay? How are you taking video of your students? It, it's in a variety of situations, just like you just mentioned. Sometimes it is in station work, especially this year when I have the students starting to work together. Mm -hmm. There may be I, four iPads is not going to stretch out for a whole class, so I will probably have that at one or two stations, and the other stations will be other things. Um, mm -hmm. And so they'll be able to, um, I'll be able to help them a little bit more as we go through. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I will have the whole class be doing something, and I'll just pan you know, my iPad back and forth, and just have them keep going through an activity. Um, sometimes it's games. Um, but it doesn't have to just be skill development. It can also be, like, the cooperative activities right. um, to have them, you know, turn it around and have them see what they look like um, mm -hmm. when they're cooperating with each other. So there's a lot of different uses for it. You know, we think of it being for skill only, but it can mm -hmm. also be for the affective thing, for them to mm -hmm. see their sportsmanship and some of those things as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and that's not something we, we typically think of, and mm -hmm. uh, of videotaping someone's sportsmanship and then showing that to them and being like, hey, did you know that this is what you look like right now? Or, right. you know, and, right. I'm, and that's if it's negative, but if it's a positive, same thing. Right. Yep. You know, hey, yep. you did a be, great job. Yep, a great way to reinforce yeah. it. Absolutely. Now, it, you know, that goes right into, you know, we're talking just general education with assessment in our district right now. And, you know, just talking about, you know, whether, you know, when you're capturing assessments, formative assessments, and I, mm -hmm. I consider a lot of this the video analysis very formative in nature. Yep. Um, and we're, you're talking about doing it in a variety of ways and doing it, um, you know, consistently and continually. And that's what you're talking about here. You know, you're, you're, te you're taking it, whether it's station work or gameplay, whatever it is, you know, you're using that video tool um, in just a variety of settings, and I think that's a that's a really powerful way to get that feedback to students and to help inform your teaching as well. So, that's I think a, the biggest reason I'm so excited is I could see what one iPad did for me as mm -hmm. a teacher, but mm -hmm. I couldn't get to everybody, and yeah. so it's like going to have a trickle down effect. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Well, that, that that'll be exciting. You'll have to document your progress, and we'll have to get you back on and talk about it. 
Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> so, so now one other thing I want to talk about a little bit is uh, classroom management. So what is something you know, that maybe you do in your classroom that you've learned tricks of the trade, that you've learned over the years that really helps you uh, manage your classroom efficiently through transitions, through things of that nature, to redirect whatever it is that you could share? Uh, there's lots of different things, you know, and as long as I've been teaching some of them I have used probably almost all the time and then things change. Uh, music is, is a big component of um, classroom management, you know. I try to use it as much as I can and the kids know mm -hmm. that when the music stops, they stop and that's just a nice, quiet, natural way for them to get the signal. Mm -hmm. If I ever do use a whistle at all, I have certain, you know, like three whistles mean stop no matter what, you know, something, I need to tell you something or there might be an emergency and I want to make sure everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there'll be certain lines that I may use, you know, say everybody go to this black line, you know, so that they know where they're going. Um, when I use iPad or not iPads, when I use pedometers, mm -hmm. um, they have those nice handy little holders, you know, with the numbers in them. I have my mm -hmm. pedometers numbered, but I actually have it broken up into two sets because 24 kids all reaching into one group, you know. So I have found yeah. that having, you know, it just helps to have a few more, um, just to make that process go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Sometimes buddying kids up is a good way, you know, so like if we're using pedometers and somebody's having trouble but somebody can help them, um, a little buddy system sometimes works. So mm -hmm. those are some of my classroom management stuff. Uh, so. a, mas a master of the PE tricks that you've collected <laughs> throughout the years. <laughs> and I'm still learning more. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's, if, if you're not learning you're, you're done, right? It's like, right. Yep. times we're all still learning. Yeah, that's, that's good. I actually like the, um, you know, I use music quite a bit too, whether it's, you know, music, you know, stop, um, you know, when the music stops, students stop, that kind of thing. But, you know, I've, got, I've gotten away from a whistle, but, you know, that's, that's a, mm -hmm. I, I haven't necessarily considered, you know, uh, you know, having like, you know, two whistles means this or three whistles means this. It's just another, especially outside. It's mostly outside. Yeah, and, and yeah. I think that's something I was reflecting on after this year is that, you know, I really need to go back to carrying a whistle with me outside. Um, yeah. It's just I really tough. like the ones that you can push, you know, mm -hmm. with your thumb. Those are really mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, want, I just want to share one other thing. If people don't know about Music Workout, um, that app, it's an awesome mm -hmm. app. If you're doing stations, you can pretty much plug your music mm -hmm. in, and then you can also time how long you want your rest. And that way you don't have to stop the music and, mm -hmm. you know, you can just keep flowing and helping your students out. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think I got from Matt Pomeroy. So I'm very happy that he shared that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I know, I know Matt has shared that. I've heard Blue Jay Bridge share that. I think the creator of that, uh, Jared Robertson, is a guy who's oh, created, Miss, Mr. Robo, <laughs> the PE geek, he's actually going to be on the show here in like a week or two, so that, that's a awesome. good, good little sneak peek. Well, we got to give him props. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. I, I was giving him props this morning when, because yesterday he was talking about um, this, uh, the, the new heart rate monitor from Polar. That oh, I know. It's the Bluetooth. You can connect to your iPads, yeah. Yeah, you connect to your iPads, and I, I was showing that to my principal this morning, and we ordered 10, so I'm like, yes. Oh, that's go. great, Adam. Yeah, it oh, that's is. That's awesome. <laughs> so I, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to get that going. So, but, uh, but yeah. So, last question. Okay. So, advice to future PE teachers or pre-service teachers right now who are going through a PE program. What advice would you give them about heading into the profession as a new teacher, or it could be advice that you wish you had had when you were entering the profession um, that you'd like to share. Um, I think the biggest thing is I've had the opportunity to be a mentor to um, new teachers that are actually coming into their first role. One of the elementaries I have been was in a part-time position and that was kind of a revolving door because it was part-time. And so even though they were not pre-service teachers, you know, I got very new um, teachers to work with. I think the biggest thing is don't be afraid to be creative. Um, if you're working at a middle school and high school level and you have to do some team teaching, be willing to share your ideas. You know, mm -hmm. it, it can feel kind of intimidating to do that with older teachers and um, not feel like your ideas may be as valid, but they definitely are. And the teachers that have been veterans and have been in teaching really need to hear what 
you guys are coming out of college learning about and um, so that it makes them a better teacher you know mm -hmm. and the kids are the ones that win when teachers can collaborate together and they're gonna get the best curriculum you know and I have to say the PE uh, staff that I have in Cedarburg has been such a wonderful group you know we applied for a PEP grant a couple years ago we didn't get it but what came out of it into our curriculum and how we work together and the vision we have for our kids was the most exciting part of it and quite a few of them are fairly young you know they were like six years and younger in their teaching so that was all very exciting. Yeah, good advice. Take it away, and, and that's, that's, that's a good way to, to kick off and end our, our first back-to-school session right there, especially for Yay. people who are getting ready for their first job. So once again, I think that's all the time we have, but thanks, Patty, for, for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Thank it you for having me, on. Adam. Yeah. Once again, that's uh, Patty Castell. She is at PK underscore LV2 Teach PE. I got it right this time on Twitter. Our, our NASPY Elementary Teacher of the Year in uh, Thorson Elementary in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Um, and once again, that is another Phys Edagogy episode, and we will catch you next time.